Live of the KH Fits Podcast. This week, unsurprisingly, we are going to be talking about Kingdom Hearts because we got a whole bunch of Kingdom Hearts news and a new trailer at E3 this year. So, uh, as your usual podcast host, you have myself, Misty. And me, Libra GKD. And me, Kel Axon. As our staff guests, we have... Kat. And me, Karata. And then as our member guest... Kos, hello. So we have a full house today, which is great because we have fun Kingdom Hearts stuff to talk about. Um, I do want to address, uh, we were off for two weeks for the podcast. One, because I was on vacation, and then it was E3. We planned during E3 to live stream, and that would have been a lot of fun, but we had awful, dreadful technical difficulties, and it just didn't pan out. So... Maybe next, next year. year. Yeah, hopefully next year. Maybe we'll maybe you'll have a better a computer better. next year. Maybe I'll build a computer for myself, and we won't be waiting on my laptop to die. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll see what happens. But um, you know, for now we have the podcast, and that's great. It just it will be devoid of our faces. So sorry if you wanted to look at us. <laughs> so this week we're gonna be talking about Kingdom Hearts at E3 because it was actually at E3, which was surprising to me. We got a new trailer for Kingdom Hearts Three and Unchained Key. We we had Sora's new outfit unveiled, uh, a Tangle World was conf- confirmed, and we got a whole bunch of Tetsuya Nomura interviews, and we're going to be going through all of that this week on the podcast. So to start off, I want to talk about Sora's new outfit, which I'm sure you all have seen, and let's share some thoughts on it. So the costume mixes aesthetics from Kingdom Hearts 2 and Dream Drop Distance. It's meant to be a little bit more sleek and sporty, and... Uh, it's it's kind of simple looking. Yeah, it doesn't it, is. it doesn't have much detail. I don't know if you guys are pro or con for that. <laughs> I mean, it is as you said, it is very simple, especially compared to the Kingdom Hearts two outfit. Yeah, where which was like straps and zippers, zippers and pouches and chains. <laughs> as this one actually seems more oddly enough grounded on like actual clothing. <laughs> I, I mean, I like it. Um, it's um, it almost. The I feel like red could be a bit more prominent than it currently is in it. See, um, I, I kind of like it. It's very muted. I like it kind of muted, though, because I feel like the Dream Drop Distance outfit was like, wow, look at me, I'm dressed in red, whereas this one is a little more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- th- I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't say that I want red to be overpowering the whole thing, but it, I it, don't know. It, something I get what about you're it saying, just seemed, it, Something about it just, like, very dark. Because everything else is kind of black and yeah, not even so much dark. Like, cause the Kingdom Hearts two outfit was dark, but it had like colorful details. Yeah. Whereas yeah. this one, it it is very monotone, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Simple and mon- clean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <to> go true. <laughs> monotone would actually probably be a good way to describe it because it is just kind of those two colors on the outfit. There are some little details, like there's some kind of like military style buttons and there's a little bit of plaid on the jacket, which is cool. It's just, it's very, I don't know. I have, I have really mixed feelings about it to be honest. I will say that I hate the gloves. They are really- You do? Yes. I am really (sighs) angry about the gloves. They're- really long and they remind me of like the plastic yellow gloves that you wear when you wash toilets <laughs> and oh they just they, they don't have enough detail to me and i i really hate the gloves the gloves are the one part that i'm like these need to go they're i i, I they're feel like up to his elbows they're like really i could long. i feel those gloves could work if they were more tight fitting yeah and that too they're like just like big I don't. I don't like the gloves. I mean, they had to make something huge because the shoes are normal now. That too. The shoes I'm are really actually angry the about size the shoes. of his feet. The shoes are too small. <laughs> <laughs> Never in my life did I think I'd say that. I don't know. His shoes. His shoes seem similar to the sizes of Kingdom Hearts Two. No, because the, the no, actually, they are. No, they they are smaller. His well, his entire look is very form fitting now. Yeah. I mean, they even toned down his hair. Yeah, I feel like what happened was uh, before Kingdom Hearts 3, Sora, like, visited his mother and she sorted out (laughs) all his clothes and his hair and that's why he looks so different now. That's, like, the thing I have. But, yeah, um, they also got got rid of um, the X's that Sora had because in Kingdom Hearts 1, he had that X on his outfit and then 2, he had that X on his belt and then in Dream Drop Distance and that goes with the whole thing that Xehanort can track the X's, so they got rid of that, that I guess. He had that X in Kingdom Hearts 1? Yeah, I think so. I uh, thought he did at least. Uh, I, don't I don't think there was, I don't think was he an did. X, unless you count like his belt. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was talking about. Okay, the belts. 
Yeah, I mean, I thought that counted as the um, X when they were talking about, like, Xehanort tracking. Yeah, I mean, that to me is one of the stupidest plot points that has come out of the Kingdom Hearts series. <laughs> See, I told that to my friend and they didn't believe me. They thought that I was, like, um, telling them a fan It sounds like, like something no. somebody yeah, would make up. <laughs> I, in looking at the Kingdom Hearts um, outfit right now, I'm just noticing the pants are even like tight. The Kingdom on Hearts him. three one. Yeah, like yeah, at, like underneath. I mean, especially the... compared to like his original outfit. I mean, no, in I which mean, they under were... yeah, underneath like the the poofy <laughs> bit, there's like un- more underneath it that are like form fitting to his legs. Yeah, it reminds me actually of um Cloud's pants in Final Fantasy seven, how they kind of like balloon out a little, but then they go in at the leg a little ma- bit. His are like kind of shorts though, Sora's, whereas Cloud's are like full pants. But yeah, I mean, it, I I like the look. I think that it's a neat look. I like kind of like slimming it down and kind of maturing it, kind of simplifying it but i i'm angry about the gloves and the shoes <laughs> see i i can't agree with you about the gloves that's like my favorite part of really? his costume yes i love them they 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 i think they just complement the rest of his outfit and frankly it's kind of nice to have something there i mean i i mean i wouldn't want him to see to see him go gloveless because he he's always had the gloves and that's just to me like a kingdom hearts thing at this point but I, I just think they need detail to them. Like, the Kingdom Hearts 2 ones, they had, like, the X on it, and they had, like, that, like, medallion sort of going on. And this one, this one, it has, like, a circle, but there's nothing on the circle. Like, I just, I want some detail and texture to them. Was this, like, like, in the trailer, was this, like, his final... That uh, That is something I wanted to bring up. Render, model. because I feel like the Tetsuya or somebody said that it's still kind of a work in progress, so... Yes. I mean, Nomura did one of uh, those uh, interviews at E3. There was a whole uh, more in-depth analysis where he was interviewed, mm-hmm. and he talked about how this costume was sort of rushed because he liked the Cage 2 outfit and he knew it was a fan favorite, but the team insisted that he make something, so he made this. And th- if you look closely at the trailer, even on Sora's model, it's kind of unpolished on the actual models like shading and details yeah. aren't really there uh, like especially if you look at goofy it's glaringly obvious as he's walking yeah. behind it's terrifying oh, goofy has scary but, eyes <laughs> <laughs> no goofy is just scary on his own and so i'm i'm hoping that uh the next thing that they uh do because they did say there was going to be uh another world reveal and more details uh soon i'm hoping that they add a little bit more polish because even now, like, they they have room for that. Yeah, yeah, that is something that I did want to bring up. I, I, yeah, I agree. I don't think that the model is final. It did seem like Nomura, like, drew up this outfit. And even just that the trailer was split, that you had him in his Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit for some of it, and then it switched to the other one, it just says to me, like, they haven't worked out the whole outfit thing and that the model might not be final. Because this Kingdom Hearts 2 model, it looked really good, you know? It was responding to the light and had texture to it and everything. Yeah. So yeah. so I agree. I don't think that the model is final. And I'm I'm hoping that as we see it, you know, like, get polished more, that I will feel better about the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, overall, I do have mostly positive feelings about the outfit. I think that it was warranted as much as I love the Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit as much as I was with Namur and kind of wanted to keep it I, it is it is good to have a new one agreed so moving into the actual trailer the trailer itself i'm i want to go just like scene by scene and kind of mention any details <laughs> so feel free to jump in i know that kyle did a really cool um you know trailer analysis that he posted on the website and i'm sure that you guys have watched it like at least three or four times and found your own stuff and that's that's actually one thing that i love about the kingdom hearts fandom like not just that we've been so starved for info that we relentlessly dissect every trailer but there's just like the detail that people go into with trailers and stuff it's really people, really great it, to see yeah, some it's... people it's it's taking a little bit too far which we're gonna get into but it, it's just it's such a sign of like wow everybody loves this so much and it's it's nice to me because i get feelings about that okay so the trailer opens with um young master xehanort and master eriquist having a conversation and playing chess uh first thing i want to bring up is that the voice acting was in english now yeah, that's that, not... that kind of surprised yeah. me I mean, it's not a total surprise given that E3 is a event in America. That hasn't stopped them before. <laughs> yeah, that hasn't stopped them before. But, I mean, it is good to see. And also something that uh, I saw on Reddit. Uh, somebody pointed out that the there is a difference in the lip syncing between the English version of this trailer and the Japanese version of this trailer. Which 
is really, really cool. And I think just lends itself more and more to this idea that we have that Kingdom Hearts 3 will be released worldwide in like a pretty tight time frame. That it won't be like uh, it has been previously with like Kingdom Hearts 2 where it was released in Japan and then months later it came to North America. So seeing not only that they have the lip sync, but the voice acting too is... It's a good sign to me. It's a really good sign. Yeah, that that opening scene, um, I would like to note, is the same room and chess piece that was in the December teaser trailer that they showed to people who went to the 2.5 launch event. Thank you for confirming that because that yes. was literally my next bullet point. Yes, yes <laughs> um, that was that is for sure. That was the same room and chess piece that Sora. Um, they showed they had a model of Sora in that room instead of Xehanort and um, mm-hmm. Ericus, but that is the same room and chess set that was modeled back then which is exciting and i which i think confirms that we're kind of have gonna have sora going into the backstory of uh Eriquis and saying or which is which is expected but i like that idea of like him kind of like investigating i guess their origins and learning about them yeah so we'll see we'll see where exactly that that room is i think land of departure is a good guess yeah there was, it's weird because the again i'm using the teaser trailer that could be be anything but the area they showed right before that room was Daybreak Town. Okay. I mean, obviously the two things could be completely separate, but I think it'd be weird to show Daybreak Town and then transition to this room mm-hmm. um, and kind of this stuff. But yeah, I, we'll find out sooner or later. I was actually thinking it was Twilight Town, but I'll I'll get to that later because I have a feeling that I'll bring it up why again but it did look a little bit like the mansion to me it does um, remind but like me of the in mansion. a newer version of the mansion so if they went back in time that they were both there and um mm. it, it was wasn't as improved it, it, it was, i mean the thing about that room is that it wasn't really orangey to it <laughs> well rooms I mean, can look different within well, the same I, no, house but, I, mean, but, I mean just think of anything in the mansion or in twilight town in general yeah that's um, true um, everything always had this orange hue to it. Because it's um, Twilight. While... Yeah. They were, <laughs> they're very subtle with what they do with this series. Um, but the this one had more of a... I don't know. It was much... It was lighter. Yeah. Um, I would say very on like light blues and maybe light... I don't know. But it no, wasn't and that, that is kind of the scheme of Daybreak Town, the yeah. light blue thing. I, I agree with Cal, though, that it reminded me of the mansion, but I think I might just chalk that up to, like, Kingdom Hearts design aesthetic, you know, like... There that are books this is in just... here. It must be, like, yes! the mansion. <laughs> Plus, we have to keep in mind that the mansion was pretty fucked up the last time we saw it, and for Sora to go back there and see it, like, suddenly intact, it would be weird. Like, oh, look, here's this room that I just didn't enter last time, and that is perfectly preserved. That That would be weird. <laughs> you know, that that wouldn't make much sense. Although, um, having played the hell out of 2.5 recently and Platinum to Cage 2, uh, there is a whole section of the mansion that's closed off because of debris. Okay, that, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, like, there's a, there's a whole door that's just sealed off because everything's falling in front of it. And uh, looking at the trailer, I did notice that when you're in Twilight Town, the way to the mansion is actually sealed off. Like, it's yes. completely covered by bricks. I was so going to bring that up, too. <laughs> I don't know if that. that actually plays a part in, uh, in exploring over there, but it, it would be really interesting to see a, an intact mansion with all mm. these, like, clues from the past and seeing it matter in the overarching scheme of things. Yeah. And the yeah. way it's sealed off, a lot of people were pointing out that it's sealed off from, like, the mansion side rather than the Twilight Town side, so it was somebody over there, which <laughs> I think was... I don't know if that's, like, um, means anything at all or if the, they just is it, did is it, it really bad it that I just cool, I, but... I, I, is, yeah, is it really bad that I'm thinking that they just did this because they didn't want to render that? <laughs> like, they, I mean, that, that could be a possibility. They just, they just like, well, here's just this wall now instead of having it opened up and just... My thought was, like, how am I going to get back to the pods that nominate? Because I, I really like nominate, and I like nominate's, like, weird rooms. And so, for some reason, like, the first thing to come to mind was, like, but how am I going to see nominate's weird room? It wasn't anything like, there must be something in the mansion that's important. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens with the mansion. I think that there are definitely mysteries 
left to explore there, and we'll see if this room was. And if there isn't, they'll else. make some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's Kingdom Hearts, so yeah. <laughs> God knows what will happen. So, uh, getting back to the trailer, um, Ericus and uh, Xehanort are playing chess and discussing the Keyblade War and the Lost Masters, and it's kind of like that teaser that we had before. Um, a lot has been made of the chess pieces. I have not paid enough attention to it, so if somebody else wants to take the reins for this part, go ahead. Uh, I, I could, uh, because I've, I've actually done my own little analysis, and I've also seen a bunch of other people's. Um, each of the chess pieces has a little symbol on top, and obviously we see at the very end of the trailer the crown that represents Sora, and one of those, like, I almost want to say, like, it's horn. Goat head. Well, goat head, some people have said it looks like a dark ball, almost. Um... But the goat yeah, head thing, those... that's like satanic. <laughs> <laughs> I Hello, mean, Xehanort is not a nice Zaynor. guy. You know? <laughs> darkness, darkness, evil, that sort of thing. But yeah, those obviously represent the final showdown between Sora and Master Xehanort. But if you look at all the screenshots very carefully, which a lot of people actually have, you can see that there are other symbols like the empty heartless uh, mm -hmm. logo, but without the strikes in the middle, which represents Riku because it matches the key, the keychain for Way to the Dawn. Uh, you can see the star charm from Chain of Memories, which some people have speculated represents Kyrie, and others have speculated may represent Naminé. There's a couple that have like these dual meanings that you're not really sure about, but it's interesting to look at and see that maybe some of these people, like Roxas and Shion and Naminé, could actually play a part. Or Nomura just wants to put some cool symbols on top of chess pieces. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm with you. I like I like seeing people analyze it. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there are actually a couple in the very back of the chessboard that are the head of Aqua's uh, Keyblade, uh, Rainfall or Stormfall, and one that is a symbol on Ventus's. Um, station of awakening mm -hmm. so it's it's interesting to note that those two are going to play a part but since they're in the back of the board it may be that they come in later in the story it may be that they play less of a part than the current wielders well in chess you do keep you know your good pieces towards the back of the board at least for like the initial part of the game because you want to protect them so like aqua honestly is the most powerful to me so she would be like kind of the queen in my eyes because she's the queen of my heart and of kingdom hearts <laughs> but um you know keep it, it would make sense for her to be more towards the back of the board and sort of protected whereas like the knights and bishops and pawns would be more on the board yeah, I, I don't really play chess, so... That's I don't play chess either. No, I play chess, Break game. and you're right, Misty. <laughs> <laughs> All of my chess information comes from Wizards Chess and Harry Potter. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, still, that's more chess knowledge than I have. Yeah. So it's... I want to know what is up with their, like, weird chessboard where there's, like, raised platforms on it. What is this fantasy chess it's they are Keyblade playing? It's Keyblade Master's chess, you know? Like, Wizard's chess except in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> there this you polygonal chess board. <laughs> Being really lame, I want to say it's, like, ups and downs for either side. Like, you have your peaks and your valleys, and you've got the big battles on the raised platforms, like, at the very end. But what's really interesting to note is uh, Xehanort's side of the board and his pieces, because a lot of those... Uh, seem to represent some of the nobodies from Organization 13. Like, you have a pair of dice, which is Luxord, and uh, it's interesting to look at who may or may not be a part of the final battle. Like, you obviously have Isa's um, Berserk mode uh, Claymore with the little hole in it. You have um, the gears that represent Vanitas. You have... Um, these bolts that may or may not represent Bragg, uh, but we already know he's a part of it. And some people even speculated uh, Evan's shield, maybe? Although he was, um, he, he was at the, um, at, Z at Ansem's lab in Radiant Garden, so I'm not too sure about that. But yeah, just speculating all these things is really interesting, and uh, maybe we could put a couple links to some of these in the post so everyone can look at this for themselves and see how much of this they think is legit yeah i mean it's interesting too that we would get um especially luck swords because we have not seen luck sword at all and it was, and that's such a <laughs> shame because i loved luck sword he was, he was a cool guy he was, was, yeah, was great he was so like 
the rest of the organization was kind of nefarious. I mean, not maybe not some of them, but he was just kind of like, I want to have some fun. He was like, just there for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> he had, like, a cool goatee. Like, I, I want to see more of Luxor, so I <laughs> hope that... He had all, all Yeah. Well, I mean... Luxord's magic is the time stuff, right? Like, so maybe that's why Xehanort would go and look for him, because true. Xehanort also has time true, things. Yeah. Why so, did we introduce point. time travel to this series? <laughs> why did we do this? What did we do to deserve this? Nothing. <laughs> we complained about spinoffs, that's what. <laughs> Speaking it's just of time. a wibbly wobbly timey wimey kind of story. <laughs> Speaking of time, uh, we also uh, a little bit later in the trailer we see a calendar shown behind Master Ericus, and I uh, need to talk about this because uh, I'm please. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of grody <laughs> about it too. Fans have pointed out that the calendar lines up with December 2016, and uh, that kind of coincides with this uh, leaked air quotes leaked footage it's, showing yeah, a winter 2016. Fake. Yeah, it's been confirmed as fake. The game is not coming out in 2016. I'm sorry. I know that I don't have a crystal ball, but I feel pretty confident in going to the mat and saying that King Mars 3 will not be out next year. I'm sorry to crush everyone's dreams, but I can see maybe 2016 for Final Fantasy 15, and King Mars 3 absolutely is not coming out before Final Fantasy 15. I'm pretty sure 16's. I mean, 16. 15's <laughs> coming out next year. So. Yeah. Six, 2016 seems like a good year for Final Fantasy 15. I could see Kingdom Hearts 3 in 2017, but, like, I'm sorry, the calendar, it doesn't mean anything. I know that it lines up with December 2016, but I pulled out, like, a couple more months that it lines up with in 2017 and 2018, and there are plenty more beyond that. And... Maybe it's, they're using a calendar that starts with Monday. That too. This is just this is assuming that the King of Hearts universe uses a Gregorian calendar, which is a very big leap to me. <laughs> and you know, it's, somebody could have just been bored and thrown together a cal- like I don't make a lot of that the calendar. The calendar is not anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a stupid thing in the background. Yeah. It's yeah. there to give the room Well, someone personality. else was saying um that the color scheme for the calendar was the color scheme of 3D. Uh, like Dream Drop Distance, and those colors aren't used anywhere else, so they were assuming that maybe the 2016 date, quote unquote, was going to be the uh, HD remake for 3D <sighs> instead of 3 Just the and... big sigh. <laughs> yeah. I was one of these calendar people once, so please don't be too me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I have been in the Kingdom Hearts fandom for a long time. I have seen crazy theories and like as much as i want to just sit there and be like come on guys it it's cute and fun to see how people look at these things it's just like at at a certain point i think we need to take a step back and say like the calendar is not a big deal (laughs) (laughs) yeah we will talk about though the dream drop distance thing because i was surprised at the absence of something at e3 but we'll get back to the trailer (laughs) now um so we get to see gameplay which was i think the bulk of the trailer and wow it is a lot of moving around (laughs) yeah the the, the thing i mean it makes sense for them to show it this way but they were very intent in showing just what sora can do now as compared to what he can do in past games so they showed off a lot of special abilities and moves and just stuff which i think makes sense because i think that they're at a point in development where they have started like doing like you know animation and modeling but they haven't realized some of the like bigger elements you know like doing like cutscenes and doing all these areas so it makes sense that they would pack the trailer filled with gameplay and it's impressive stuff to show you know it leaves an impression the feeling i got when i was watching the gameplay was being kind of almost overwhelmed by the stuff going on on screen because there's so many just like it wasn't like standard combat yeah didn't look like it was a lot of like keyblade transformation special moves um just a whole bunch of um the ride summon things there's just a bunch of a lot of like flair to everything that it wasn't so much i don't think it's in in the like i don't think that's representative of how the game will play all the time um, because obviously there is just your standard Keyblade swings yes. <laughs> that is still in there. But it was just, I almost want to say they showed a bit too much too fast because everything was so crammed in that it, I kind of got lost halfway through. <laughs> I agree. This is a trailer that you need to watch several times. And not just that, but like I think most of us watched it live. And stream quality is... Not mm, the best. 
So, like, you're seeing, like, these, like, sparkles come out of nowhere, and, like, you're getting the impression of movement, but you're like, what is going on? You know, you're, like, really dizzy. And so you, you need to watch the trailer again and again, and in HD. To if really, you want like, to do that. Yeah. We, <laughs> KingHeartsVideos.net <laughs> offers We have that trailer videos. up for download on our video archives. Yes, yeah, in HD. So you definitely do need to check it out yeah. multiple times. But uh, to talk specifically about some of the uh, gameplay that we got to see... Uh, I want to talk about the worlds. I guess that's not really gameplay, but um, <laughs> the no, first world... it was world... so open. Yes, it's yes. so big. Like when he jumps into the chasm... And you're it, just like, what? If it ends up being so open world instead of restricted to these areas that we've been d- throughout the whole actually, series, I'm going to be so happy. Yeah, it, it, that, that chasm part actually reminded me a bit of the Cavern of Remembrance, um, because that was that part in Kingdom Hearts 2 um, Final Mix was actually kind of open, and it also sort of frustrating when you fall from the top and you're all the way at the bottom again and you're like yeah I but I mean that that um. would make sense if they're like extending the flow motion system and giving yeah, Sora yeah, yeah, more yeah, like yeah. jumping abilities. Yeah. You know, you can navigate that now. Because one one problem that I've had with the Kingdom Hearts series is that the areas have been pretty closed off. You know, they've been kind of boxy, and that makes sense considering that a lot of the titles have been on mobile devices and you can't do like these grandiose areas on mobile devices. But it was also limited by movement. That the one area that sticks out to me as like big and open was that like wasteland in the Pride Lands in Kingdom Hearts 2. And I get that it had to be that way because they had that really cool big boss fight there. But later, when you had to, like, run there. across... It took so long to run across that area. And it frustrated me. Like, it's, even considering that you run a little bit faster as a lion, it took a long time. So the movements have definitely allowed them to really open up the areas. And it, it's really impressive. Yeah, the one thing that I'm hoping for in these games is... Not so much, I mean, it's nice that they're bigger and open, but I want them to be more dense. Um, Because in previous games, I mean, they're small and everything, you know, that kind of goes with that. But there was kind of nothing to do in them, really. Yes. Um, You kind of just went in, got out, and kind of went on your way. Um, I would, obviously, they probably couldn't show too much of that because this was all focused on gameplay. But I still hope for worlds that have a bit more life to them. But I think I think we did see that though because you know you have sort of like running up some like rocks and jumping around. There were like those poles that he jumped across, and I like to seeing the heartless interact with the environment. Like the water ones kind of sprung up by the lake, and you could see like effects to that. The grass moved around, and I mean you know like you said, we'll hopefully see more of it in the future. But I I think that there's reason to be optimistic about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm still hoping that they're a bit more to it than just being open space. Because then that's just kind of, well, now I have all this open space I need to get through. <laughs> yeah, it's, of... <laughs> it's going back to that problem of King Mertz 2 and the Pride, Pride Land. Sorry, I burped a little. <laughs> 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 Disgusting. Okay. <laughs> um, where is I going? But, like, you know, the game is still in very early stages. So if they don't have a lot of the detail and the flash and everything in it, that yet, that, that's okay. I'm just, I'm, it's weird because, w- especially when I'm thinking about 2 compared to 1. Um, Kingdom Hearts 1, there was, I mean, the areas weren't all that much bigger, but there was more to it in 1. Like, just think of, like, the deep jungle campsite area, where there's just a whole bunch Mm -hmm. of stuff there, and, I mean, not all of it obviously significant, but it gave a lot of feeling to that area, and then Mm -hmm. you look at something like I don't know the pride as you as we keep mentioning the pride lands, but the pride lands, which is literally just a big empty it's, space. It's nothing. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's that there's so much of it because you can't really do anything in there. Yeah. Like you have you have the campsite in Land of Dragons where it's condensed, but you've got these things to jump off of, and then you have these tents that you can beat up till they explode, <laughs> and you have Heartless to fight. Or in the wasteland, you have three points of Heartless at any of the entrances to the other areas. And then a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. So the first world that we saw was Mount Olympus. I think we're all pretty set on that, what with the pillars and the statues. And so Mount Olympus was there. We saw Twilight Town. Maybe of we'll course. actually go to Mount Olympus this time. Which is That's exciting. What I'm thinking because of the Zeus Keyblade. Because you don't include Zeus and his Thunderbolt on the actual <laughs> head of a Keyblade without going to meet Zeus and yeah. all the gods. Especially after Herc becoming a true hero and Sora and company becoming true heroes in yeah. Game Hearts 2. Um, the thing with the Keyblade was a lot of people on Tumblr thought it was a fish 
And I don't know how they got that, but at the angle, they looked at it, and I was just like, okay, Kalaxon investigates. And I looked before the Keyblade transformed because it looked like the same one, and it was Zeus holding a Thunderbolt. So I replied yeah. to that person and then was like, I'm sorry, guys. No. And, like, my chat was going crazy trying to figure out, like, what fish-related world it could be. Like, God forbid it's Atlantica. Everybody's going to freak out. But I was just like, I'm I'm sorry. I really want that to be like a regular feature on KHV, just like Kalexon investigates and like Photoshop like a detective hat on your head and yes. do, do it. So I want to do that. We'll talk later. <laughs> but uh yeah, so uh Mount Olympus, and that's exciting because to me Olympus Coliseum is like a staple in the games. I know that people complain that oh it's been there so long and I, I, I'm happy that they're opening it up and varying it a little, but I'm I'm happy that it's there. I'm really excited for Mount Olympus. It just means we'll see Hades again, which is always a delight. Exactly. And James Woods is a phenomenal voice actor and it's it's great. Um I love Mount Olympus and Olympus Coliseum and Hercules. Hercules is a great movie and it does not get enough love. So I know. love Thank Hercules. You. It is yeah. it is a shame. It, I think the only other Disney movie of that era that gets less love than that is Pocahontas. Oh, I will get <laughs> uh, don't get me going on Pocahontas. <laughs> but yeah, Can we just- no, can we just have a Pocahontas world I where she breaks into world. song and Sora does that? One of our that John Smith does that. One of our user song. submitted questions is about worlds, so we'll get into that later. But <laughs> Hercules is great. Um, we saw Twilight Town, and we got the confirmation of a Tangled world. Uh, I think a lot of people were predicting that a Tangled world would happen. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that. I mean, I, I mean I, obviously, there was more people who were. Well, because Frozen, Frozen, Frozen is definitely yeah. happening. That's not like, even a prediction yeah. at this yeah. point. Like, I, I, I was personally really, I was really glad that they had Tangled be the first like new world revealed because I really love Tangled. Tangled just fits so well into the Kingdom Hearts universe, just from the. Feel I have of it. not so. seen Tangled. So... <laughs> I, I just associate any knowledge of that. I'm not, not, I'm not say gonna that. spoil anything for you, but uh I really don't know anything that, about it. <laughs> the whole point is that Rapunzel wants to leave her tower and and go to this other whole other part of of the world and see these lanterns that float every year on her birthday. So the whole feel of she wants to go out and explore. Perfect yeah. for Kingdom Hearts. And there's also the fact that Nomura confirmed that uh she will be fighting with, with her, her hair. hair. They talk with so her. much about the hair during that interview. They're like, we really want to add Tangled because Rapunzel has such personality and her hair. And then later with like the Roy Conley interview, he's like, I'm so excited, like the work that they're putting into her hair. And I'm just like, I mean, yeah, it's Rapunzel. The hair is like central, but just having to mention it so many times. And speaking of Roy Conley, he <laughs> looks like Master Xehanort. No, I love that he actually joked about it. Yes. Yeah. I'm really happy about that. I really, I was, th- I was taking a shower last night and thinking about, the podcast because that that's what i do um <laughs> and i'm like i would love if we could get an interview with roy conley we have not done an interview in a long time and that's a uh, big stretch because he, he's a big deal but yeah, he is a producer at disney even uh, if we couldn't get him on the podcast like even if just we were able to email him like my number one question would be like has anybody pointed this out to you like before and why do you look so much like him <laughs> i would like to know if it was intentional that, yeah like, I just, throughout I, that that little bit of hair yeah just just to seal the look see i yeah. didn't know who roy conley like uh like uh was Which i don't know why i said that he, twice he hasn't worked uh, he hasn't just worked on tangled like he's done a lot of disney movies yeah and yeah. i i don't know maybe i thought he was somebody else and i got him confused <laughs> but like when they said that it, when they were joking around he was xanord i thought they were introducing the new voice actor for uh <laughs> master xanord <laughs> freaking out but nobody got that same reaction as me and then i realized who he was and i'm like okay i'm just not gonna tell anyone that and um <laughs> but now i told a lot of people that depending on who watches the i part. mean that would have been really cute to have the actual voice actor look the part even though looking the part doesn't really matter in voice acting <laughs> or just make roy conley the voice actor for masters and Art. <laughs> So Tangled will definitely be excited, but I, I think that at the top of people, like, if you asked everybody what they thought the most likely world was, not just, like, what they wanted, but most likely worlds, I think Frozen, Tangled, and Brave would be really high up there. I, I think Tangled, I mean, I think Tangled would be in the top ten. Um, I'm not sure if I would put it in, like... I would say top five. Really? Yes. Mm. I, I would agree with that. There's, yeah. there's, there's, I mean, it depend depending on who you ask, there's a very... 
there are other Disney properties that people also really want in this series. I know, but I'm saying most likely. Not what you want the most, but most likely. Because Tangled was successful commercially. It was really successful. And they're working on a sequel now. It just, it, it oh, seems are? right. Yes, oh, they are. I must have missed that news. I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Disney, Disney makes sequels out of everything. That, that so. is also true. So I, I think you mean surprised. the TV show, because the only oh. sequel that I heard about was uh, Frozen. But there's oh. going to be a Tangled so show, a like there show. was a Little Mermaid. And, okay. Um, Aladdin, I, I, I haven't seen Tangled, so I didn't keep up with it that closely. <laughs> oh, but watch it. I, yes, I, when the trailer ended and like all this E3 stuff ended, I said I should really watch Tangled now. <laughs> you should, because it's a good movie regardless of whether or not it's in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, yeah. So back so, to the There trailer. are some pretty bad games bad movies in kingdom hearts so yeah that's very true <laughs> if you say tron i will fight you i did not say personally. tron he's probably referring to alice in wonderland i mean wonderland has been overused but alice in one okay okay back to the truth no no no, 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 no. i love to conclusions that i didn't even say <laughs> <laughs> I love alice in wonderland just then which saying. one are you talking about nick I do I'm, not like um nightmare before christmas i thought oh, you were gonna okay. say hollow bash I was gonna you were saying that yeah yeah I, I mean, I mean, you do it's not all, like Nightmare Before Christmas. The, the style is okay, but it's just like... Eh. And then again, I'm not a big Tim Burton person. I do not like most of his stuff. I mean, for uh, all the King Hearts point. games I've played, I've still never seen Nightmare Before Christmas, so I can't really count on that. I haven't seen Nightmare Before Christmas. You know, that is actually it. the reason I actually saw Nightmare Before Christmas, because it's like, okay, I've never seen this movie, so I kind of need to get on that. because Yeah, that was the same thing I, I did. Well, I, I saw Nightmare Before Christmas because I was 12 in 2007, and you could not go into any hot topic without seeing yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. Like, yeah, I when saw the hell so did you guys it, grow I was up? sort of turned off to actually watching it. Yeah, but I, I mean, it's I a mean, I, movie. I mean, I was obviously, what, how, how, I was... 2007, you would have been 14. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm trying to think, I think I saw it when it got first released. Um, I don't remember when That was, was in the released. 90s, I yeah. think. Yeah, um, yeah it, it was, was in like the 98? 90s. Um, yeah, it's just, <laughs> and like, I was like, <laughs> I, I, the style and the, like, claymation type thing was interesting but everything else about it was just kind of well it's okay the it's... songs were cute and it was a cute yeah. movie oh the songs were brilliant they yeah. weren't I, I i will say that i did what's like what's this the yeah, great I will, I, great I will song say, i will say that the song <laughs> the songs in that movie were really good um but everything else just couldn't make it also really good <laughs> okay well back to the trailer <laughs> <laughs> Have I been trying to get us back to the trailer for a while? Um, talking more about the gameplay elements that we saw. Uh, Sword Darling Goofy did a Trinity Limit attack, which, yay. Trinity Limit. <laughs> Trinity Limit is just like friendship the attack. So I, I like, I like, <laughs> yeah, I like that, Trinity yeah, Limit. Yeah. Um, we see the Rock Titan fight again, uh, which we saw previously in the D23 Expo um, footage. But we so saw. Much, yeah, the two, the D. That D two three wasn't so much as a fight as it was Sora riding a train. Yeah, yeah. Rounds. So we got to see that, more that was of the it. Hype train really taking off. <laughs> we got to see more of it as an actual fight. You know, we saw not just the train, but we saw him like fighting the feet and kind of like running up the Rock Titan, which was cool. So um, the attraction flow attacks though were a presence in the um, trailer. We got to see the train now. I'm not sure if the train is supposed to be the electric parade train or Big Thunder Mountain. If it could they be either or decided at this point. that. Yeah, I, I always thought I'm it was Big still Thunder set Mountain. on Big Thunder Mountain because of the little header they had on the command menu at the D23 um, trailer. It's just because I mean, I guess I guess I mean, I guess everything's covered in lights. Um, yeah, it so just guess, it reminded like, me of the electric parade. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, I was with you on that. That it, I thought it was an electric parade thing. Um, but I mean, I guess if everything's covered in lights, then yeah. maybe it's just yeah. Because even yeah. the pirate ship is covered in and the teacups like... as well. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I maybe there's the big thunder are, mountain. Just the, the reason for it. We and should get just... space mountain in there. Space mountain is such a boring, overrated ride. I'm sorry. Uh, I went uh, to I went to Disney maybe, World in we January. Are, we are in two different theme parks, by the way. Okay, so. okay, <laughs> but it was just a roller coaster <laughs> in the dark, and it was lame. Like, oh, how do wasn't... you ma how do you make a? There was. Uh... I remember, it, I mean, I don't know the last time, I don't know Disney World, I've never been there, um, but in Disneyland, um, it, I remember the very first time I went on that ride, it was very dark and all this other stuff, and they recent, recently, and I say recently in relative terms, um, they, they redid it about four or five years ago. And I went on it, and it was, I don't know, I, I, I felt like I, it wasn't as dark, and I can see a lot of things, and I was, it felt like I was, 
Like there was more space. I mean, because I mean, the entire thing is it's in space. Um, but I felt more that I was like seeing stuff instead of just being in this pitch black roller coaster of a ride. Okay. Well, one of our users submitted questions about what is about what rides we want to see added, so we okay. will get to that okay. too. Yeah. Um. So we saw the uh, train, the teacups from the Mad Tea Party. Um. The pirate ship was shown again, and at one point, Sora like rode in a chariot. I don't. I mean, that obviously Pegasus, like, that that was that looked yeah. like Pegasus. Yeah. That so was I yeah. summoned for Pegasus. Yeah. I wasn't sure to count it here, but I wanted to mention it nonetheless. But it was a cool summon. <laughs> yeah. There, there, yeah. there seems to be two kind of summon e type things like now. actual summons like we've seen before and then attraction summons yeah. where you just bring the all of that yeah. yeah uh we also saw the keyblade transformations again uh this time of course in more detail we saw like the guns and uh Nomura described something as a double bow gun i'm not really sure and like again the trailer there was so much going on that it's hard to tell but i mean keyblade transformations they're a cool idea i'm excited to see how they pan out we just we don't know that much about them yet to talk about i don't think we know how we know that they transform and how they look when they're transformed and that's... and sort of what they do yeah just sort of in a big yeah. sense yeah and of course flow motion seems to be coming back which i'm excited about because um i know a lot of people liked the system in dream drop distance i haven't played dream drop distance so i can't speak i've heard from... mixed things on it in dream drop distance <laughs> it got old kind of fast and, yeah and it was it was good for navigating landscapes because now you could like scale all these huge buildings and areas. But at the same time, your thumbs get really sore really fast, and it, it loses uh, it it loses its splendor kind of quickly. So I'm yeah. I'm a little hesitant to see it come back. I'm, I'm, but at the same time, I want to see how they improve on it. Exactly, I want to see how they refine it in terms of controls and. Uh, just uh like you know like we were saying the areas are so much bigger that you kind of need something to get you around i think yeah. in terms of um movement it's really convenient but in terms of like combat it's like super overpowered in dream drop it, it really okay. is yeah because you can get rid of these hordes even on critical without breaking a sweat yeah so so again it's something for them to refine and improve which it, which is the goal i think that they have so many cool elements from not just stream drop distance but like various kingdom hearts games that having them like pick the best of the best and put that into kingdom hearts 3 is is what we want to see uh, and I, I i would hope and i would hope that when that they were they are able to kind of um implement those all in a cohesive way yeah because it, it'll show there's, us they just, there, you know, there, there is together. There, yeah there's a thing called too much and yeah that could sometimes be more harmful than actually like make things like hey look at all this stuff we can do but yeah if you have all this stuff and it's kind of like uh, it's not as well like integrated as it should be then it's kind of why I have it yeah yeah and on that note they did mention drive forms in later interviews and uh it, the team seemed like they were considering adding them back but i think it might be kind of that issue you're getting at nick where they feel like they have so much already that to put another thing in on top of that it, it might start to feel like a lot and just unnecessary yeah that said though i i like seeing sora's like outfit transform <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and maybe in one of them he'll have acceptable gloves. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just not gonna let that glove thing go. I, I really don't like the gloves. I'm sorry. I don't think I'm gonna come around to them. <laughs> as, as far as dry forms go, I I do really enjoy them. I enjoy how they like dual wield and do all that. But I feel like with the inclusion of these Keyblade transformations and with the inclusion of flow motion, there just really wouldn't be a point yeah. unless they wanted to do. Like, like with Limit Form in Final Mix, like where there's throwbacks to Cage 1 and Cage 2 Sora, then I could sort of see a purpose for it. But other I, than that, I it will would be add sort of overdoing it. Also, that Sora dodge rolled in the trailer, and to me, one of the greatest crimes of Kingdom Hearts 2 was that there was no dodge roll. So I'm very happy that dodge roll... It, it was in, like, a lot of the mobile titles. I think all of them, actually. Yeah. Um, so it was, and it was no even in surprise. Kingdom Hearts 2 eventually. Yeah, with Limit Form, but, but still... Dodge, dodge roll is important. Um, now, Kyle, you wanted to talk about the uh, command menu, the uh, HUD displays, that kind of thing. You want to go off on that? Oh, yeah. Well, I made a video uh, earlier today, and it's up now on my channel. I'll, I'll link it in the, the post for this or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but there's between the three trailers we have so far, uh, the one we got at E3 in 2013, the one we got at D23, and then the one we got at this E3, uh, if you look at the the HUDs for all of the trailers, there's like a couple differences. 
like uh, in the E3 2013 trailer, you'll see that there's two two tabs on top of the command menu. Uh, so like in KH2, where you could switch between different pages, mm-hmm. um, uh, I think you could switch between summon and limit on the bottom. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in the in the two most recent trailers we have, those two tabs have been removed. Um, and there's just another couple uh, small differences like that that I kind of went over. So I'm just gonna say this right now that yeah. the the HUD that you see in the latest trailer is fake. Yeah. I'm saying that right now because it doesn't change at all during. Which is the, which is the other thing that I wanted to bring up about all the, this gameplay. We have no idea how you even use any of these things. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you if that ca- that command board was an, an actual functioning command board, then we can see like, oh, you do this and you do like. For the magic, it would at least change from the very first slot, which we all know is attack. I don't know if the HUD's fake on the newest one, but it definitely isn't fully functional because most things don't change, but Sora does lose health. Yeah, it, yeah. That, 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 I was mostly I was mostly um, commenting on the command board thing because oh, right. it doesn't change like at all. It's always yeah. on that first option, and he's doing all this crazy <laughs> stuff, and that command board is not changing at all. Yeah. So that is... So that 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 was kind of my one disappointment about this because we have all this gameplay stuff, but we actually don't know exactly how it works because we have no idea what like is being pressed or what command thing they're going to to activate these things. But that's something that we won't know. I mean, until we get like people actually playing the no, game. I mean, yeah, eventually, but, no, I would hope that they do. Yeah, live no, gameplay yeah, even, and E3 in the future. yeah, eventually when people are playing. But I mean, even in a gameplay trailer, you can get a somewhat of an idea when you see like the command thing. You're going down the list. Like, oh, when he does this, then that means like it's going down to you know. Well, it was also in Japanese the commands. Well, menu. you can translate that at least. Yes, you can translate, <laughs> but it is a barrier for us. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know. I'm just saying that there's like n- there was no feedback whatsoever in yeah. what Sora was doing, and that's kind of a bummer because yeah. I would I would like to know how certain things work. Like I really like to know how you activate like those transformations or how you how you differentiate between summoning like a summon and summoning an attraction and yeah. just yeah. It's something I'm sure we'll see in the future. Yeah, yeah. I do. Be better. <laughs> I do want to bring up the uh, design of the command menu too. That it is a definitely more simple look, kind of more attuned to what we had in the first Kingdom Hearts game. Um, I just wanted you guys to kind of weigh in on: Do you like that idea of like going back to the Kingdom Hearts style, or do you like like the Kingdom Hearts two ones that kind of were what? They can have both. Like yes, yeah, absolutely. If, if they do it like King, Hearts yeah, Kingdom Hearts two. You can between. yeah, you can have the default thing that looked like Kingdom yes. Hearts one, and then just have world specific. Um, I I I think for sure they're gonna have probably world specific and this plain one. Yeah. Um, just because they that command um, world specific command menus kind of give the entire thing more of a personality for yes. each world. I really liked that they yeah. did that. Yeah. And so I I'm pretty I'm pretty confident in saying that they are probably going to have both. Mm-hmm. Um, or if or if not both, then the world specific one. I liked also in Birth by Sleep um, how the command menu would sort of respond to the I don't remember what they were called the mode you were in like when you went to like Ghost Drive mode. Um, the command menu would change, so I think that that is actually a possibility, especially for like the attraction flow attacks, like the train where you see it moving around and doing multiple things, kind of seeing the command menu transform based on like the mode you're in. So I think that's a possibility. I think they did that in Kingdom Hearts 2 with summons, if I remember correctly. I remember having to use reaction commands, which is something else to bring up with the gameplay, that they took out reaction commands and which QTEs. Which is great! Yes. <laughs> it's not often that you say we, that you hear people saying, yeah, we took out the QTEs. <laughs> so, I, yeah, we'll, we'll see again how it pans out. That's something that you only, see, only hear about when you have, like, a reporter playing the game and then telling you, like, oh, this is what I did and everything. But it, it's something that we'll, we'll, we're excited to see. Um, so some just odds and ends from uh, interviews and stuff. Um, Gameplay and world assignments have been decided, and the foundation of the game is done. Uh, They want to reveal a new Disney World soon. I'm guessing probably at, like, probably not Gamescom. Definitely D23 if it hasn't happened before then, but uh, I'm I'm, I'm gonna say it's probably a Frozen World. Oh, it's so 100% it's gonna be Frozen. (laughs) With the trend that I'm seeing, if they're doing Tangled, I would expect Frozen and maybe even some of the newer Disney movies that they've been uh, releasing since King Hearts 2. Like, I'm looking at the list of stuff they've done. Uh, well, like I Tangled, said, we have a user Princess submit a question Frog, about it. All that. Yeah. So we'll get to it. Yeah. But, uh, that very, yeah, that very soon it could be kind of... I, w- I wouldn't actually be surprised if we got something at Gamescom. 
Um, I just because, I say just maybe because, not Gamescom just because it's going to be like Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, blowout. I mean, but that that's kind of why I think because it seems like Square is trying to have a big presence at Gamescom. Okay. So you'll have you'll have obviously the, the majority of the news is going to be focused on 15, but there will still probably be maybe something on the side um, as well because mm-hmm. it's like hey we're we're going to have all this press on us at e- I mean, at Gamescom this year anyway. So why don't we talk a little bit about our other upcoming titles that aren't mm. 15? Yeah, it's true. We'll see. Um, and uh, then finally that the new worlds and areas that they're working on and adding into Kingdom Hearts 3, they want them to be ones that we haven't seen before, which is great news. And that's like what everybody says when they are asked, like, what worlds do you want? They're like, I just want something new and fresh. And I like that idea, you know, again, of them adding worlds we've seen before, like Olympus Coliseum, but giving us new areas to explore and really like making them something unique. Because, you know, I think we're all tired of being in Wonderlands. <laughs> <laughs> We've been in there once it and twice feels, if you count it coded. It feels like more. It feels like more. There's so much they can. There's, there's, they, they barely did anything in in Wonderland. I know, that, but I'm that lotus of... forest. I have nightmares about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the lotus forest, and you're good. <laughs> See, I agree. I think they should bring Wonderland back, but expand upon it because the Queen's throne room is nice, but. Come, come on. <laughs> There's so much more that could be done with it that they just haven't. D- yeah, yeah. 358 at least did something different. Yeah, like, they expanded it a little bit. But you were still in the Lotus Forest. So, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, at least even with the Olympus Coliseum, which has been in every single game, except I think Dream Drop Distance, um, they, they at least went from the actual arena to the the town in Birth by Sleep to the underworld, underworld in Kingdom Hearts yeah. 2 and then probably Mount Olympus in Kingdom Hearts 3. With Wonderland, it's the same set of areas mm-hmm. in in the throne room. Be- the maze is really the only thing that I remember differently from uh, Days, although be- I haven't played it in a while, so correct me if I'm wrong. To be fair for Wonderland, the only other games it's been in, that it's been in besides Kingdom Hearts 1 have been titles that I would want to say haven't received the best attention um to being like a good game yeah um, well, but wonderland is the reason no <laughs> <laughs> was wonderland in chain yeah wonderland yes. was in chain of memory but i mean yeah. everything in kingdom hearts one was in chain of memory yes. except deep yeah. jungle it's like, oh it's thank god um, yeah, I'm not like, eager to return to Jeep Jungle. Like, Even, like and I, it won't happen so <laughs> um, but yeah like i just want I'm just, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, it's great news that they're doing newer areas. It's just very happy to hear that confirmed. So, to kind of finish off our discussion of the trailer, I want to ask the question that everybody wonders, but some people don't like to answer, but this is a Kingdom Hearts podcast and I'm going to fucking do it. What <laughs> stage do we think Kingdom Hearts 3 is and when do you think we can expect release? Well, considering what they said, I think. I think. I think it's probably at the stage where we're not going to see it until at least the early months of 2017. Because, like you were saying earlier, I don't think we're going to see it in 2016 as much as I would like to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I think we'll get a release date in 2016, most definitely. But they've said, like, we've got the outline done and they've got at least from this trailer two stages in pretty polished condition but so if there's i'm assume they're still working on the world so i think frozen will be next and considering they've still got to make the cut scenes and things and yeah i think it's going to be 2017 because i know how long it takes to render yeah cut scenes and things and that's that's the longest process of making a game right there it's just the animations and the cutscenes and the world building is the easy part, believe it or not. So, you know, I think I think maybe the early months of 2017, maybe March, which would be nice. Yeah, I mean that that's I'm basically thinking sometime in 2017. Um, the first half would be neat. Um, I'm not entirely committed to thinking that just yet um, because they are at a point where it seems like E3. It's always it's it's always weird to consider a game when you based off its E3 demo or trailer or whatever, because those things are made specifically for E3. They aren't. And a lot of the times that 
like you have this thing that is made specifically specifically for this event and then will never really get used or needs to get reworked or needs to do a whole bunch of other stuff and there's just a lot of just weirdness around kind of preparing public trailers and demos and all this fun stuff so i mean at at the point where it is right now there you have as they mentioned you have the worlds down you have gameplay elements down you have hope hopefully a working like at least a somewhat functional gameplay system in place at this point um it's more right now it is more about filling in the blanks what they have in their game so and that and depending on how i i am i am not aware of squares um a set process in creating them but depending on how their set creation goes it that's kind of just filling in a bunch of stuff like it it's a lot of stuff that you need to fill in but it is still time consuming stuff that you need to do so i i'm pretty sure that we're not going to see much in terms of release until 17 because it's just i don't think there's any way that they could get it out <laughs> before that yeah i'm kind of feeling like a fall maybe like september 2017 release just because i i think i'm more skeptical than most about when kingdom hearts 3 is coming out i mean if you if you listen to the po our previous podcast episode our e3 predictions i was saying like kingdom hearts 3 will definitely not be at e3 it is not in any state to see it and i mean i do have to you know eat crow a little bit and say you know, i was wrong but uh, I, I I just I I don't think it's coming out anytime soon. Yeah yeah I mean yeah I mean I'm I'm with you in being being I I want to say realistic yeah about when how things go because Square Square is a weird company right now. It takes them so <laughs> fucking long to make games. It no, it's not even it's not even so much that it takes them so long to make games. It's that they're in a position now where they actually seem to be on track with a lot of things. They do with their announcements. They I mean Final Fantasy VII remake and Final Fantasy XV coming out. They're starting new IPs. You know they're doing a lot of cool stuff. It's just a matter of getting those games out. Yeah, there's just I mean it's it's just an it's 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 a weird situation because you have these games that have been kind of of not i went outside of final fantasy um 15 haven't been in production for all that long mm -hmm. um like i mean kingdom hearts 3 is if it gets released in 2017 then that would be a let's see four years from announcement to release which i mean that's sort of on the long side but um, they did announce it very early that yes, we do they did have to keep that in it, mind. it seemed like they and they basically had a cg render of what they wanted the game to be and then they started working on it and uh, not just that but its development hell is tied very closely to the final fantasy 15 development hell uh, but i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily call it development hell though because it has final been... fantasy 15 is in development no, hell. no no not that i mean kingdom hearts 3 oh oh yeah um, yeah because <laughs> it, 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 it hasn't really been in development yes um, it's yeah. just been kind of thrown around as concepts and maybe more like this... storyboard hell i would say it's like stuck up on somebody's like cork board saying like kingdom hearts 3 and they just haven't been able to take it down because final fantasy 15 <laughs> yeah it, 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 it's 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 an interesting little saga that square went through last generation of yeah. games yeah but it, it seems like they're getting their <laughs> together now you know they're releasing western games and their japanese titles are coming together like i think that final fantasy 15 i you guys know I have very mixed feelings about borderline negative at this point, and I think that they're at a point where they're just like, finish it. Just finish it. Cut our losses. I don't care if it's not the, like, stellar product that everybody wants, and that's why that they're focusing so much on, like, tell us what you think, and, like, what do you want changed? Just because they want something that, like, people are okay with. They don't want it to, they don't expect it to blow anyone away anymore. They're know, like, get it out. That, that, that game, I know we're getting a bit off topic, but that it's game... It's sad. It's sad they're, because they're, they're entire development cool. with that game right. Yeah, that entire development with the game right now makes them look like incompetent developers yeah. who can't make <laughs> a good game because yeah. they're constantly asking people, hey, you like this, right? And it's just, it's sad. But it's sad. Kingdom it Hearts is very 3, sad. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3, it is, I mean, I think it, I mean, there is a good reason why we're probably seeing a speed up development with it moving to the Unreal Engine. And this is kind of true in Japanese games in general, how that, that using that engine has kind of just spurred on this kind of, hey, we can make games again. Oh, type definitely. Attitude. 
It's just Square, like, learning to get with the times and conform with the rest of the video game industry and look at what everybody else is doing right and say, hey, maybe we shouldn't build an in-house engine. <laughs> well, the the popular thing in the Western industry right now is to build an in-house engine. <laughs> true, that because, is true. No, because EA is using their own thing, Ubisoft is using their own thing, Bethesda uses their own thing. It's like, it's it's one of the reasons why I think Unreal is taking off in Japan is because Epic who is behind the Unreal Engine, is kind of like, well, nobody is buying our product anymore. <laughs> so let's expand to a market that we have historically always ignored and had had poor documentation support for. And that's kind of paying off in some ways because Japanese developers are using the Unreal Engine and are producing games again. Well, I think it's that Western developers, they have worked with Unreal before, that they used to work with Unreal a lot. And so they're, they're kind of... I guess more efficient and they're at a point where they're ready to build their own engine and ready to like implement things and just I don't I don't know that much about how game development works but they they're they're at a point where they can build their own engine whereas Square when they already kind of have trouble releasing things for them to go and build an engine and platform hop with that engine it's it's a problem yeah 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 yeah. because i mean if you want to take up somebody like ea or some or some other like that ea knows how to churn out games they have immense resources yeah i feel like those companies is that they've when they've started using they have realized that they needed to use the unreal engine out of necessity to mm -hmm. get out their games but while they were licensing that product they were busy making their own thing because why would they want to pay a license fee to another company to use their stuff to make games and they get paid for it yeah. and instead invest in their own? But they had, they had, but that's the thing. They at least had the time to actually use this other engine while they were making their own thing yeah. because otherwise we, nobody would be releasing games. Yeah. <laughs> anymore. Whereas Square was just like, drop everything. Let's work on Luminous. <laughs> yeah. And that didn't pan out for them. Is Final Fantasy XV still on the Luminous engine, or did it, they switch that over? It's still on it. It's it's a weirdly modified, yeah. weirdly not finished thing. That's what I thought. Cause it's I, troubling yeah, that we think... don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, but I just I just wasn't sure because I know Kingdom Hearts switched over, but I, yes. I yeah. didn't know if Final Fantasy yeah. did. From from what I'm being what I've gathered from Final Fantasy XV is that it's on the an incomplete Luminous engine, and they're using other and they're just kind of filling in the gaps when they need it. Yeah. Um, because it's like there's no reason to try and make a feature complete engine anymore, so they use what they have, and then they just kind of custom make everything without actually in putting that in the in the like having that part of the engine creation itself because there's no reason to actually create the engine anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that we're all kind of feeling 2017 for Kingdom Hearts 3. I think that it could push into 2018, but 2016 oh, please, no. is too optimistic. I'm sorry. If you think 2016... And I... I feel bad. I feel bad shooting down, especially children's hopes of when Kingdom Hearts 3 will come out. I feel bad. I really do. But it is it is out of a protective spirit that I was once that child that was like hopping on every release date rumor and looking at placeholder dates and thinking that they're real and getting way too excited. And I just, I want you all to be safe and not get your hopes crushed. If you ever have any problems with that, I am <laughs> glad to break other people's dreams. <laughs> I don't really care like the time, the actual year it is, as long as it's either Christmas, or, I mean, I'm holding out hope for like a summer release date, which doesn't really yeah, I mean, happen. You, uh, so, yeah. sometime when there's a vacation where I can just sit down for a or, week or and play, play. Maybe 72 hours straight. Exactly, be because that's just take off from school. That's what I did when Kingdom Hearts well, 2 came out. <laughs> in 2017, I'll be in grade... Tw well, it depends on when, but I'll be like either the end of grade 11 or I'll be in grade 12, so I can't really take so off school I'll for that. So I'll hope for fall for you because senior year, you don't do shit. And so it's the perfect time to just take a year off and play Kingdom Hearts. Not a year off, maybe a week. <laughs> it's, it's, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's weird. The Kingdom Hearts series has never had like, hey, it's always released this time of year. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of because like, Sometimes it's September. I Kingdom Hearts January, 2 March. January, March, just yeah, any time. Kingdom Hearts launched in March. Dream Drop Distance launched in August. We've been on every console every time of year. That's it. But, yeah, it's... Um, Expect nothing, because you don't know. Yeah, and I will add this for the children. The longer it takes for Kingdom Hearts 3 to come out, the more time you have to save for a PS4 or get your mommy and daddy to buy you one. They just announced a new PS4 today. What? 
It, it, it's, it's, it's not much different. It's a little lighter, a little slimmer, and instead of having gloss on the HDD um, God cover, damn it! it's now God matte. damn it, I hate I that fucking gloss! I mine like three weeks ago on sale. <laughs> Are you kidding me with it? It also, it also draws less power, but... The, like it, the current one doesn't. Dr it's a terabyte too. I'm 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 not sure if because I know Europe is getting a terabyte PS4. I'm not sure if that's true worldwide, but yeah. Okay. Well, we've gotten very off topic. We need to move ahead because I have work. Yes. <laughs> yes. So also at E3, we got an Unchained Key trailer. Nothing very exciting. It's cool to see the game. I'm sure we're all hey, excited to play it. it's localized. Yeah, Ooh. it's being localized. We will add, though, that an American firm that is right now only coming to North America and Japan. There hasn't been a word yet on Europe or other regions. I'm hopeful that it will come to other regions, but we just we don't know at this point. So, once again, Europe gets shifted by Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> J J Japanese Shafted. developers yeah. and Japanese developers in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, Though I'm pretty sure, like, on the iPhone at least, you can just change the region for your app store. I'm not sure, because, anecdote time, there is an E3, E3, EP by Los Campesinos that is only available in the UK iTunes store, and so I was like, whatever, I'll just change my region and buy it, and I couldn't, and it gave me all these problems, and I tried making, like, an iTunes account for the UK, and it was just a nightmare. I don't know if it's changed, it's been years since was I tried, but, yeah. Was the thing free, or did you have to pay for it? You have to pay for it. Because I'm pretty sure that's only a problem, though, if you have to, like, use money. Yeah, I think the problem Cause... was that I didn't have, like, a UK address and credit card to put down. Yeah, because, I mean, cheese going to be free, so. True, true. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Free right to now. play. Just... Woo. I did not know that. I thought that we would have to... Never mind, though. <laughs> Microtransactions. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm dreading. Yep. I'm uh, okay with that, though, because I'm you okay don't have to use them. They're, like, optional. Th if you needed to use them to pro progress through the game, I'd be much more mad. But I don't yeah, understand but... why my friends have, like, their panties in a twist over this. But that's just me. I'm just worried because games, I have very uh... little self-control. <laughs> I will say, though, to finish off our E3 thing, I am very surprised that they did not announce anything about HD remasters, neither the collection that we were expecting nor the Dream Drop Distance HD thing, just nothing. I think they've got enough on their plate right now. Oh, I mean... yeah. Okay, here's the thing. Th those things exist. I'm going to say that right now. Yeah, they, they exist. exist. I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that right now. Those, thing those collections do exist. So I'm just sort of surprised that they didn't, they didn't bother to say anything here, yeah. even off on a, like an offhand, like, hey, yeah, it's something. Yeah, the well, thing is, maybe they're, they're waiting be... for somewhere else to get their hype up again because they already had the the sure. Kingdom Hearts three. They had a lot going for them, so maybe they're just like, okay, well, we'll say that later, and then people will talk about us again. But, yeah, something like that. I could yeah, I could see them saving this because the, clearly we've we've agreed for the most part that there's going to be a lull in cage three news mm -hmm. so i think they're going to announce that while there's that lull to keep us all sated yeah i was more surprised because like nobody was expecting them to bring kingdom hearts 3 final fantasy 7 remake like nobody nobody really i mean kingdom hearts 3 more so than final fantasy 7 but like nobody expected those huge announcements so if those huge announcements weren't there i absolutely believe that they would announce the hd remasters but because we had those it's not terribly surprising but i'm still I still feel weird about it. Like, I was expecting, like, an interview or something, somebody to mention it. Maybe at Gamescom. Maybe that's what we'll see about Kingdom Hearts at Gamescom. Yeah, they're probably going to announce, like, a, a PS4 complete HD bundle, including Dream Drop Distance or yeah. something like that. Because yeah, that's what it's, we were expecting. That's That's got to happen, because... Where where was um 1.5 and 2.5 announced? 2.5 was TGS... No, 2.5 was the D23. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, there's a good chance they could just announce this at D23, which that's is in, a possibility. like, November, I think, isn't it? When was 1.5, yeah. though? And I it really was don't remember at E3. 1.5 was announced at Yes, E3, it was. And then right after that, we got, like, the first Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. And... I, I'm. Mm. I, I. The thing is that I could. I could see them announcing more HD remaster stuff at D23 if they do the next reveal trailer for a world at Gamescom. Yeah. I could sort of see that. Yeah. Too. We'll see. I'm just. I wanted to note the absence of it at E3 because we we were pretty resolute on the last episode that it would be announced at E3. <laughs> yeah, so we'll get into user-submitted questions um, because all of them revolve around the trailer. We got, like, a bunch of them mm -hmm. 
when the trailer came out, so I thought I'd tack them on. So, to submit a question to the Cage Fist Podcast, all you have to do is fill the form link to every episode of the podcast, or send an email to podcast at cagefist.net. The questions can be directed towards the host in particular, or the group in general, and they can be about King Hearts, the Cage Fits, or our lives in general, anything like that. Send us a question. So, the first question comes from Scar- Scarred Nobody, or Tummer, and he asks, what other Disneyland attractions would you like to see added to the lineup of attraction flow attacks, and how do you think they would function? Star Tours. Yes! <laughs> 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 that's the only Star Wars inclusion. <laughs> exactly, and that's I, I the amount that I could bear. That. I'm a, I'm okay with that too because I don't want a Star Wars world, but I would be cool with a Star Tours attack. I I can picture like a uh, a uh, Star Star Wars related uh, gummy ship, and maybe nice that fighter could be implemented for the attack. Yeah, yeah like maybe, a Millennium maybe. Falcon gummy ship. Yeah, Millennium Falcon, Tie Fighter, that sort of thing. Um, as as far as attractions, I would like to see. Talking about that Space Mountain thing earlier, uh, I know that from my experience, having gone on it, I think it was four times in one day, using all my fast passes for that all day, uh, it has multiple tracks, at least for the one in Disney World. Yes. Because I, I remember two very distinct uh, Sorry, what, tracks. Sorry, what what ride is this? Space, Space Mountain. Mountain. In Disney oh, World. yes. Okay. I, I, yeah. I just zoned out for a second because I was reading 1.5 announcement news, <laughs> 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 which was um, announced at TGS. Okay. So I, I could see maybe, just to give it a little bit of variation, some of the attraction flows having that sort of um, like uh, different ways that it could pan out. Like maybe some sometimes you use it, it could be critical. Other times it could be a little less effective. Just giving it that sort of risk of if you use it, is it going to actually do anything to help you? Like I, I yeah. just think that would be an interesting uh, dynamic mm-hmm. to it. Not saying Space Mountain should be one of them, but... <laughs> Like just as a, as a gameplay element for it. Well, obviously, Soren should be in there. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Soren, but Soren is the most bullshit ride in all of Disney World. Soren, that's a hand glider one, right? Yeah. Where you're yeah, riding that, over yeah. somewhere I, with yeah. like say, oranges I'm, or something. I'm sorry, I'm but that originated that. from yeah, that's because that that was originally part of. Disney's California Adventure here yeah. in California, and it was soaring over California, and you kind of just soared over various parts of California. It's not much better in Disney World. It's so stupid, and it has such a long wait, mostly because it's, like, the only ride in Epcot. That's it why just, I never went on it. It's horrible. I fast-passed it. Actually, the first time I went on it, um, I met up with former KHV staff member, and she worked at Disney World at the time, and she got us in but then i fast passed it the second time i went to disney world it's horrible so i was joking about the soren thing um i i would normally say mailstorm which was the uh, boat ride in norway but they're getting rid of that um for a frozen ride so meh. uh i would really like to see the dumbo one just because i feel like that's like classic disney but i mean of course that like why not just turn it into a dumbo summon and have dumbo be like alive and not just something you sit in but <laughs> yeah, those are the ones that are really coming to mind. Maybe it's a small world. <laughs> oh, I was thinking Actually, it's a small world, especially because they had the ice cream beat with the it's a small world song that I don't know that oh. they remember it or something. I was also thinking the Buzz Lightyear ride where you that's true uh, that would you shoot things yeah. and stuff, especially um, considering the that um, Woody and Buzz were rejected summons in Final Mix. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And actually thinking about it now, I would love to see Test Track be a part of it. I don't understand because... Test Track. People need to get over Test Track. No, but... The... <laughs> no, I listen, mean, you please. Have, you, have, you have the running gag that uh, in the first game, Sora didn't know how to pilot the gummy ship. So imagine Sora in inside of a car, trying to drive it, failing completely, and ramming it into a bunch of enemies before jumping out as it crashes and explodes. Wasn't that imagine something already? That. I'm pretty sure that was something in Kingdom Hearts already. Uh, I don't remember Sora driving a car. I, he I, rode a motorcycle. Uh, I'm. Oh, in maybe Timeless it was River, I, I feel like. Yeah, yeah that's he what I was rode thinking. on the Heartless cars, but not like an actual driving. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I just think it would be really fun to have something that just shows off that Sora is still a teenage boy who is uh, goofy and a little ignorant. And a little Donald. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Any yeah, other I'm, rides we want to yeah, mention? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of stuff um, because... It's hard because a lot of rides at Disney World, it's like sit in this little boat and go around. Yeah, like I'm, I'm thinking... I'm actually thinking of um, 
whatchamacallit, uh, California Adventure in my case because there's more, I guess, active rides there. Yeah. Um, they have like a roller coaster, like a legit roller coaster that has like twists and loops and like other stuff, which I mean, that could be interesting. I don't Whereas know. Whereas Disney World has like the Barnstormer. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's there's there is a huge Ferris wheel in California Adventure. That's like a Ferris wheel would be hard to use as an attack, though. Yeah, but then you can just roll it over things. True. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking the carousel, too, that they could use somehow. Like, yeah. Sora, Donald, and Goofy all get on, like, wait. Are Donald and Goofy, like, still there when he's yeah. using the attraction he in, summons? Yeah. He okay. The, he was in the teacups and stuff. They're in the teacups and on the train. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're least. all riding on the, um, <laughs> what, the horses or something, and it just, like, spins over the Heartless, sort of like the teacups, but I don't know how they would do that. The Ferris yeah. wheel, though, in at least in California, it, this wouldn't affect anything in game. It, it, it scared me as a little kid when I first write, wrote it, because there are certain car carriages that are stationary, and other ones that are on rails that, like, slide as the Ferris wheel goes around, and that always freaked me out. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's weird, because I'm, I'm it's hard to say, hey, this ride would be interesting. Yeah. There's also the magic carpet of Aladdin ride, which I don't I don't know why they would what about use Tower carpet of as Terror? like a summon. <laughs> That's the magic carpet thing Tower I feel like is similar to the Dumbo Aladdin. thing that like why yeah. not just yeah. make it an actual summon? Yeah. 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 And yeah. though as far as Aladdin summons go, Genie would probably be it. Again. Yeah. yeah. Tower of Terror just drop like an elevator on <laughs> things. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I just feel in general that like adding too many attraction flow attacks like even if it was just like the ones that we've seen so far i would be okay with that uh, yeah. maybe 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 two more i, um, I could see be four being a sweet spot and then you have the summons on top of that yeah just because like i feel like with kingdom hearts one i mean all of the summons mostly had like their unique functions but it sometimes felt like there were too many yeah i yeah. I, I would say like four or five would probably yeah. be a good yeah like hey this is a good amount of stuff so next question is from Quilligan or Drew, and he says, what are some worlds that seem even more possible now? And so basically just what worlds do you really feel are going to be announced for Kingdom Hearts 3? I, let's see. I, well, I think we're all in agreement on Frozen. Yes. Yeah. Frozen, um, Frozen is happening. Let's see. Possible. I, I would, I'm going to assume, or I'm going to guess, I should actually say that maybe two or three returning worlds will happen. Um, what those worlds are, I am, I'm having a hard time. I think deciding. Mulan has a lot of potential Mul to return. Mulan, maybe. Mulan two is one of the better Mulan Disney back, sequels. Yeah. And the problem well, we know is Olympus though, is like um, at the end of Kingdom Hearts two, a lot of those uh, worlds got their like happy ending yeah, type that's thing. True. Like especially with Beauty and the Beast, we can't really. I mean, we could uh, <laughs> go back there, but the problem is Beast isn't Beast anymore. He's the prince and all yeah. of that. So there's that, and a couple of other worlds got their, like, happy whatever's uh, thing. So I don't know what they could bring. Nothing's coming to mind, things that they could bring yeah. back. Like Lion I mean, King, Mulan, maybe. Yeah, the ones to that save, have had so I don't sequels, know what they would do. Yeah, I, I could see the, the worlds that have had uh, movie sequels coming back, like Mulan and Lion King, where things aren't as happy as they seem. And I could see that as sort of being an overarching theme that... Um, that even happy endings can sort of fall apart. And that could also tie into the whole uh, backstory of all these characters who are lost that Sora needs to save. Mm -hmm. um, what would be cool, um, in if we're talking about sequels, would be there's a Cinderella sequel, which is the third one, uh, but it was based uh, off a play that was on Disney Cruise Line, and it's Cinderella Twist in Time. So they find the fairy godmother's wand, and they turn back... Uh, time to <sighs> try to get Anastasia <laughs> More time to marry well, the prince. The problem so is that they're all sort of Zayn dead. If they got Zayn in there... <sighs> oh, wait, what? They are? Did they, yeah, like, no, die-die, though? In, in Birth by Sleep, uh, the carriage heartless, you hear them scream, and and oh. I'm trying to remember who says that the darkness uh, was too much for them. Well, but yeah, people come back in Kingdom Hearts I, all the time, <laughs> so, so I'm sure they could make an appearance, especially with the time travel thing in that third sequel, if Xehanort kind of was like, hey, and I don't there's know not, why he would really care about them, though. In Kingdom so. Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from my line of logic is they're going to go with, with a lot more newer movies, so Tangled, Frozen, um, 
I actually, even though it's uh, probably not going to be a thing, wreck it, Ralph. I just want to see that that fourth I don't, wall. Yeah, break. I don't. I don't see that Thank working. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I would love it. And I mean, because yeah, I mean, there there's obviously a lot of like original stuff in Wreck It Ralph, but that 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 movie relies so much on like. I guess references and like nods at other stuff that I have a hard time imagining. I, I would have to imagine licensing would be kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, that's true. But <laughs> also, oh, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. But th there is one world that I've seen theorized, which is really interesting because um, Mr. Not Xehanort uh, also happened to produce this uh, cult classic movie called Treasure Planet. And I, I do think it would be really interesting to see Treasure Planet just because it is in space. It has pirates. You could end up on the ship the same way you end up in Neverland in the first game. And I would really Way to love kill it. my excitement. <laughs> <laughs> if Treasure Planet is in there, I will, like, cry tears of joy and cry tears of joy for... There's a Treasure Planet, like, bring Treasure Planet to Kingdom Hearts 3 Facebook group that I follow. <laughs> and I knew they would be so happy. Um, so that would be definitely interesting to see what other movies that this guy has worked on yeah, it, it's an interesting thing trying to figure out what new worlds are going to be a part of this because they have quite frankly a lot that they can choose from and I'll, and just just going by kind of how they've done this in the past they can they're kind of random with what they choose yeah um, they definitely yeah. do vary it and i like that yeah so but it because of that it kind of makes it hard to guess what is likely to be yeah. in because at at this point i think anything that has been a disney movie has equal chance of being in um because i mean eventually they're gonna run out of like disney movies and have to pick s older stuff anyway like treasure planet in atlantis well i mean i guess they don't have to but i mean treasure planet's not the uh oldest thing they've gone yeah into, they've i mean hercules and hunchback were in the 90s and uh, uh, you're, you're forgetting stuff like Sleeping Beauty and Black you know, Cauldron. Yeah, Sleeping you know, Beauty, stuff. Snow White, uh, and stuff that's been released in like the is older. Yeah. 40s and 50s, and just like it's. I don't think time is that much of an issue. Um, mm -hmm. how long ago that they were released? It was just. It's at this point. I think it's more about what would blend in with Kingdom Hearts, which I mean, given their track record, they can almost make anything blend in with Kingdom Hearts. I mean, we have like Pirates of the Caribbean, and like I mean, Tron. I in um, terms of having it blend, uh, those conflicting art styles <laughs> don't exactly blend. But I'm sort of hoping yeah. for Pirates of the Caribbean to make I, I did actually return. really like Pirates. I, Since I, there no, are no, so no, many no. pirate movies and they don't really need, like, I haven't watched Pirates of the Caribbean, so I don't know if watching them in order, like, matters at all. But it <laughs> seems like you could just rip the story from there and you don't need any previous knowledge other than the first movie to kind of... um. I just want to see Davy Jones because I I, it, it, I would love the Davy Jones arc. Just because this. that that is, I mean, obviously his entire presence had to do a lot with the CGI in that film, but he was pretty great in that movie. Davy so. Jones, Orlando the Bloom. Of... Where the hell are your priorities? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Orlando There's Bloom also Kira is so insignificant. Kira Knightley, Knightley is. is... <laughs> Oh, those two characters are so insignificant now that they aren't even part of the series of movies anymore. No. Well, let's let's just admit that the series of movies has gone downhill since. Yeah, I would. No, I would. I would. Yeah. 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 At this point, it's just the. Character. I mean, I, I would. Just, I, I I just kind of enjoy um Davy Jones for just how, his entire design is actually pretty great. Yeah. And that plot point actually does really fit with Kingdom Hearts because of the whole. Yes. Kingdom yes. Hearts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he does have a heart that. I mean, is, it is places. it would not be so <laughs> animated the way it is in the movie, but it it's definitely possible. Yeah, yeah. Other worlds we want to add. This is in my hopeful list, but I really do hope for a Pocahontas. World. I love Pocahontas. Pocahontas would be beautiful with the Kingdom Shader thing because that movie is beautiful. The music is so Especially good. Especially because that fan made battle music. Yes. And, and um, field music. It was just ah, oh, that was so, so great. Yeah. I am holding out hope that Hunchback makes a return and is better than it was in 3D. <laughs> Hunchback in 3 I could go on for days about how much it disappointed me, but I'm 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 Hunchback is like my thing and so if it made a return, I don't care how 
it, as long as it's better, I would be happy. <laughs> Obviously, they've done the main movie story arc, so I don't know what exactly they would do, but I don't care. <laughs> and uh, on on my list of definitely, probably not likely, but still hopeful, Emperor's New Groove, I would love. I because think a good I chance do think that. it would look good. And, and I also would love to see Sora having to deal with Kuzco. <laughs> like just picturing that it. those conversations would be incredible. Not even just Sora, but if we see like other characters like Riku get in here, like Riku would totally oh, just yes. shut Cusco down and like Lee as well, because Lee is pretty, and like let, let's sassy not forget in that general. Donald has his his reactions to <laughs> yeah, people. Donald like has his moments too. So I mean, yeah. and they, the gang doesn't really have any regard for anybody's royal status ever. Even, yeah. like, with Sora, with Yen Sid, and then just the Emperor and all of that stuff. So even though Cusco's the Emperor of uh, wherever he is, I can't remember, but that would be... Let's just call it Peru. Yeah. Peru. Also, uh, Yzma and all her potions. Like, I could imagine uh, Cusco <laughs> transforming mid-fight, and you have to help, help him use his different forms to, to bring her down. <laughs> That or would even actually like really Sora transforming too, like they're throwing potions at them, and then Sora, Donald, and Goofy transform into other things. I mean, that could be our I gimmick mean... world, where <laughs> Sora transforms into something for the entire duration of the world. And... Let's not say that because Llama Sora is not high on my list of things. No, I want, but who said it had to be a llama? It could be anything. No, but uh, it could be a bird. I'm, I'm trying to remember if this was in the manga, but. I, I think that because Sora, Donald, and Goofy are outsiders... Oh, no, it was in the Pirates World and King Hearts too. You know how the curse of the medallions didn't affect them because oh. they weren't from the world? I could see that being a thing because, let's face it, animating and creating all those transformations for Sora and... Kamaki I mean, it, it could have just would... been one transformation. Like, he gets transformed, and, like, he enters the world and he gets transformed, and then he's just that form during the entire... The, during the duration of that world. I mean, again, Kingdom Hearts doesn't really have rules. So. Yeah. I would I mean, love yeah. cute little llama Sora. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I would not. Only one. I'm, no. I'm hopeful for Sora, who has to deal with Lama Kuzco. That's <laughs> what I want. Yeah. On my list, um, you know, obviously, like, Chicken Little, Home on the Range, Mars Needs Moms, Planes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sora has to save his own mother. Imagine that. I, I, did, all... I, I didn't know Home on the Range was a Disney joint. I is thought it that a was Disney just some, thing? I thought it's it was Disney. just like a, I thought it, it was like off brand Disney. It is Disney. It is a, like... Disney. <laughs> it is a yeah. Disney movie. It, it seems like one of those. It's one of those more obscure Disney. Disney that doesn't seem like Disney. It, it, it should is. be off brand Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but for real, um obviously Pocahontas, that's my favorite Disney movie and I want it in there bad. Um Brave, I really love Brave. I want it in there. I don't know too much but merida of course would be an awesome party member and uh, just the bear thing about brave i we really need to have an episode just about brave because i'm still not over it being a movie about a bear <laughs> have you have any of you seen like brother bear oh yeah. my god that, that, yeah, that's, that could see, also work sora transforms the bear sora that would be great see, that that's, would actually be really cute and that would justify the world transformation yeah. Well, true, but you my point is that, they want. <laughs> yeah. The thing so, about like Brother Bear ahead. or or Prince, I really would like to see Princess and the Frog. Yes, uh, that to me is mandatory yeah. for racism reasons, and also <laughs> just because it's so good. It's such a great they're movie. Do they're doing newer Disney movies. I think Tangled, Frozen, and Princess and the Frog are like the trio of newer movies. If that yeah. it's Princess weird to consider the Princess. Frog, Princess so it's um, won't they have to do Frog Sora since, like, they're kind of frogs for most Little of the- spikes on Maybe, his head. maybe not. <laughs> I mean, even, like, Frog Sora with, like, Donald and Goofy can't really stay- Well, maybe Donald could stay a duck, but he'd be fucking ginormous. Um, <laughs> Goofy would no, have to turn into imagine, something else. Imagine the contrast of Big Donald versus short little Sora and Goofy. Like, oh, how the table. I feel like turn. Donald would make fun of them. So, or they can just shrink. Totally or, the or they can just shrink them down to size, like they did in various other worlds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cinderella is the one that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. And then that was inconsistent with how this, how the characters were sized, because you had Ven who was the size of a mouse, and then Terra and Aqua who were like normal sized. Can I just say that is like one of the funniest moments in Birth by Sleep? <laughs> that is just randomly 
small. And you're like, yeah, okay, let's, let's how just talk about how Cinderella treats him like a mouse, despite the fact that he has all the features of he, yeah. <laughs> just a very tiny human. <laughs> I mean, again, it's Kingdom Hearts. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, as for, like, my kind of maybe not going to happen, but I would like it to, I really want Atlantis in there. I think Atlantis, Atlantis cool. is a cool I movie, and it yeah. would fit pretty well. Um, and I want to go to actual, like, Lilo and Stitch Hawaii. I know we got Deep yes. Space, but Lilo yes. and Stitch is a phenomenal movie. You just want to go to Hawaii. Yeah, I just want to chill out in Hawaii <laughs> and surf with uh, David and, you know, just do all that cool stuff. Plus the other experiments. Like, if we go the TV show route, That's true. I would love that. Yeah, yeah I we've, just, they've already dabbled in that in Birth by Sleep, so... Yeah, but it's just, like, the whole, yeah. the whole, like, family thing and Ohana and nobody gets... That, it, it fits. It's good for Kingdom Hearts. That, totally, so. <laughs> that especially fits with, with the saving yeah. people thing. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the um, movies that see like that seem to be kind of coming into the light that are um, going to be included in Kingdom Hearts three seem to have a lot to do with the family stuff, and especially Tangled makes me wonder if we'll hear hear more about like Sora's parents or Riku's parents or like all of those kind of people, especially with uh, Rapunzel's mother being in there. Chances are maybe not, but... Well, you also have to keep in mind... It does have a lot to do with the family thing. Disney movies tend to be about family and friendship, and that's kind of what Kingdom Hearts is about, (laughs) so all of them kind of would fit in some way or another. Yeah. 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 I also just saw Inside Out, and that would make a really cool addition. Yeah, speaking speaking of that, though, what what do you guys think of... Because you mentioned Brave, but what about Pixar in general? Um, oh, please do the Incredibles. Deal, I would be so yeah. interested. Incredibles like, and Toy Story. <sighs> oh, no. Incredibles would be so great because yeah. uh, just the contrast of, hey, what's your power? I have a giant key. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Put Sora in like spandex. Yes. I just want to see that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, give him a tighter <laughs> outfit than he has now. I mean, okay. Actually, here's something that I was reading up on somebody who was being okay with the one Marvel inclusion. Um, which I would be okay with is Big Hero Six. Yeah, I think yeah. would be yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that could actually work fairly well, um, given just, just stylistic, stylistically, and a bunch of other stuff. I think that would actually kind of work well, and it would, it would actually fill that people wanting Marvel without being. I mean, it is Marvel in, of Marvel. But it's Mar- it's it's, Dis- it's made Marvel. Yeah, it it is it is a Marvel property, but it is also made by a Disney studio instead of like the traditional like Marvel Studios type yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. But- aesthetically it fits. It makes sense. It fits with all the themes without being so in your face as uh, something like the Avengers would be. I haven't seen Big Hero Six either. I haven't either. <laughs> it's a pretty decent movie. I actually kind of enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, I need to. It's, do, you, do we need to tie you to a chair? I'm so, Force there are, you to watch these things. There are a lot of reasons that I don't get to see Disney movies, and most of them are just that nobody will go see them with me. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I need to watch struggle. them. struggle. I need to watch them. Yeah. Any last ones anybody wants to slide in, or can we move along? Okay. Uh, so finally, we're going to get into community news and projects. I know there's so much more that we could talk about and that we definitely want to talk about, but we have time limits. <laughs> uh, so community news, uh, we have three things, uh, two things, sorry, that I really want to mention. First of all, the site looks different now. Oh yeah, it's finally, been a while since yeah. we... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, finally, I put out the new styles. I've been working on them for God knows how yes, long. Yes, yes, we have. Yeah, it's so... Just... They're really pretty. I hope that you guys really like them. Um, I've, I've worked a lot on them, so you better like them. Um, so we're in kind of like the I'm fixing bugs stage right now. And uh, I am planning to do updates to them and add new features. So if there are features that you want to see, you know, like usability things, that kind of thing, definitely do let me know and I will look at adding them. I have ideas of my own that I'm putting in, but, you know, it's it's really cool. It's I'm going to be building new features on top of them and it's it's really, really, really neat. Uh, and I want to add to that that these styles allow for, like, variety and, you know, not just, you know, right now we have a dark style and a light style and that is variety in itself, but I hope to, you know, give people more options in the future. That's kind of a far off thing just because it takes time, but, you know, that that is in the framework there. Um, and we also have the user awards that are coming along. Uh, Plums is taking care of it this year, and he posted the category suggestions thread. Uh, the user awards are like fun little KHV superlatives, so definitely do get involved with them. They're a lot of fun. They were my baby for several years, and so they have a special place in my heart. So 
pay attention to them, <laughs> vote in them, nominate for them, all of that. We will definitely be plugging them on the podcast. Uh, anything else anybody wants to bring up? Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's anything else really besides the big site change yeah. stuff. Yeah. If you haven't been on the website in a while, look at it because it looks really nice. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> It now says Kingdom Hearts Videos in the banner, so you don't have to laugh at me anymore when I call it Kingdom Hearts Videos dot net. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> it's, that's the thing. It started as a bit of a joke that like me calling it Kingdom Hearts Videos dot net. It was a joke, and then I was making the banner. I'm like, okay, but what if I wrote it all? <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, 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 I'm still like even after all these years, I, I, I still find it somewhat amusing that we have a dot net um, moniker at the end. Well, yeah. Because it's just, it's just <laughs> Most like... Most people are like .com, but no, we're... And, it's, not, it's not even and that... And like, just... com. it just doesn't, it doesn't yeah, sound right. Yeah, I know. It's just like, <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, this is one of the few .net sites that are still, Used. that I still go to. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I guess that's it for community news and projects. Um, there are a lot of ways that you can participate in the podcast. Like I said, you can submit a question to the Cage Fits podcast by filling out the form linked to every episode of the podcast. You can apply to be a member guest on the Cage Fits podcast by filling out the form linked to every episode of the podcast. All you need is a Skype account, a microphone, and headphones. You can submit a topic to the Cage Fits podcast by filling out the form linked to the sticky in the podcast section. And let us know what you want us to talk about. So there's spoiler cast for us, all that good stuff. And then, of course, you can leave comments on our podcast threads, sharing your thoughts on what you've talked about, your King Hearts 3 trailer thoughts and reactions and all of that, your analyses, that kind of thing. Answer our user submitted questions, anything like that. Just interact with us because we love to hear from you guys and we love our listeners. So would anybody like to add anything or can I close this off? No. Okay. So that concludes our episode. We talked about Kingdom Hearts and it's always a joy to talk about Kingdom Hearts. So thank you to all of our guests. We had a lot today. So pat on the back for me because I actually got us guests this time. Uh, so thank you all for appearing. Thank you all for listening and have a Kingdom Hearts day.